I'm Bradley Maravalli. I'm going to present about um, WP time management. And if you guys need um, the speech or you want the presentation, just go to bradleymaravalli.com slash speaker and um, you can download it, keep it, go back. There's going to be all sorts of references and sources, YouTube videos. So highly recommend you guys go ahead and do that. So. Let's get started. So I'm um, Bradley Mayor Valley. I'm a former senior web developer at Green Banana. We were an Inc. 5000 digital company, digital ad agency out in the North Shore of Massachusetts. Um, I'm big about WordPress development. I was a software engineer before this. Um, in short, things, it's just, it wasn't my calling. And uh, luckily, I got uh, uh, what I call a rich dad. If you ever read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad who kind of took me under his wings, said, I'll, I'll hire you on the spot if you can learn WordPress, and ever since, it's just been, it's just been a rise up, and I don't know, I've just been extremely fortunate. And so I've been reading a lot of self-improvement books about time management, about so, um, not software engineering, but web development, all sorts of good stuff. So I don't know, I'm really excited to, to be presenting to you guys. And um, of course, I have a life outside of web development. I enjoy yoga, volleyball, salsa dancing, woodworking, just anything to uh, break the habit of being on the computer, kind of like craft over like that. And so, to kind of start off, uh, the biggest thing to start off with is your why. So, as um, Simon Sinek would say, very few people or companies can clearly articulate why they do what they do. By why, I mean your purpose, cause, or belief. Why does not, why does your company exist? Why do you get out of bed every morning? And why should anyone care? People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Uh, he has a famous TED Talk speech that you guys can go back to, but in, in just, um, it's, it really comes down to your why. When you present yourself, why you're going to do this, what what kind of carries you. And so for me, in terms of why I'm presenting, I was at Green Banana SEO, and um, unfortunately, my the senior developer at the time, he was starting to get really stressed out. He wanted he took a two week vacation. Two weeks turned into three weeks, and then by the fourth week, he said, "I'm not coming back. Um, you know, this isn't for me." So then I was the only one left at the company in terms of the web department. So I, my workload just increased 50%. Um, I had to take all, all the projects and whatnot. And um, it's like, oh, oh, what do you do? How do you, how do you, how do you do any of this? And it was, you know, really had to put the time management skills to the test. And honestly, I know uh, we all have a bunch of projects to do. And everyone wants to get the most amount of things done in the least amount of time. So I'm excited to be sharing what I've learned over the past multiple months and being the sole developer there. Um, the first things first, I would highly suggest you filter your emails. Uh, if you have Gmail, this is the link that you guys can go to and learn how to do that. Um, it's great for like your app notifications, your plugins, um, WordPress, anything to, anything to just try to silo all the different emails that you come and come through. I've seen so many people they don't they don't do this and all of a sudden their emails are just stacked up. They get 50 emails a day. And you look at it and it's tough because you just you still have those really important emails kind of tucked away with all those WordPress, you know, WordPress just updated, this, that, and you have 20 sites, just got the update. It's like I, then you miss something. It's just it's it's really critical. So one of the so my email set up, you got your app notifications, so you got Slack, Google, Project Hub, have all sorts of different things um, all set up in your filters. I got ones for WordPress, WordFence, uh, always have, always keep my contact forms saved on here just in case somebody's like, oh, how come the contact form didn't work? It's like, no, it did work, and I, I'll keep that in a safe place. So filtering out your Gmail is uh, highly critical. Whoops. All right. Um, yeah, another big one is how you format your emails. Um, big thing is try to get the most important words at the beginning and at the end of your sentences. Um, the way people read and the way people listen uh, is that you want 
is that the most important words are at the beginning and the end of sentences. Sometimes if you might hear people suggest that for reading purposes. If you're trying to read a book fast, you just try to read the beginning and ends of sentences. So, um, in all honesty, the, the person who does it best, and I, I know it's kind of local, is Donald Trump. There's a big speech. Um, there's a YouTube video that I can add onto the slide. And if you ever see his, his, his tweets or whatever he does, it's just it's wicked funny because he'll he'll say um, he'll he'll always kind of start off with some sort of like capturing one more things like clothes, and then he's like the the White House is closed on this date, and he always structures it really well. Is um, I don't know it's been really interesting to see. Um, that's pretty much why his campaign was such a success. People were able to remember what he was saying. Um, and also, a big one is to repeat back what your client has said. Um, that's a very military-like style. So, military, they would say something like, um, you know, take the Jeep, bring it down to the gas station, fill it up with gasoline, uh, call me back when that's done. And so, you're supposed to repeat back what, what they said. It's like, okay, so I'm going to take the Jeep, I'm going to go down to the gas station, I'm going to fill it up with diesel, I'm going to call you. It's like, no, no, not diesel, gasoline. And so you want, you always want to try to repeat back um, what, whatever the client's requesting from you. That way you guys can have that confirmation. Um, yeah. And so one of the things is like, this is a simple example of like, of what a client would say. Something like, I was thinking today that maybe we should change the bar where the user sees the notification for next Tuesday, so my clients know that we're closed for the day. It's like, that is one long sentence. I'm not really sure exactly what next Tuesday is. You said something about today, but today has nothing to do with the notification thing, and it's just, it's really convoluted. So, a better example would be, our store will be closed on Tuesday, November 6th. Please update the notification bar to reflect this change. Something simple, easy sentences. Yeah. What else? You just want you kind of want to be segmented like that, and also white space. It's huge, and you guys can bold things, italicize things, just anything to make it very easy for the reader. Um, for some note taking, uh, I highly suggest um, just. So if it's a simple task, sometimes you can avoid the step, but as soon as you start to have three or more items. Your brain really can't handle more than three three things on the mind for tasks. So one of the best things is to create a list with checkboxes. And so some of the applications you can use is Evernote, Google Keep, Google Docs, Microsoft Word. Uh, depends if the client sends you something in Microsoft Word. I'll just I'll just keep that and do a little like check mark right next to each task or or do a scratch outline. Um, Evernote and Google Keeps are pretty cool. They have they have the ones with the check boxes. That's been pretty helpful. Um, and then let's see here. There's some note taking examples. So before I said the advice is to not repeat yourself. So you don't want to keep saying like home page, do this on the home page, do that on the home page, home page. It's like, no, we can try to set it up where you have the home page and you have the task that you want. And I always try to have the, the type of task is going to be, is going to be an update, is going to be a remove, is going to be a, an add, um, things like that. And that seems to be very helpful. Uh, keep everything together. It makes everything very cleared out of what you need to get done. And so one of the things to do is to try to use things that are popular. These things have the most support that you can get. Right, I think I think we've all experienced something like Yoast SEO plugin. Um, it's like a million downloads. They have a great support team. You 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 always want something like that. If you don't have to always do that, but typically I always suggest going with something that's popular. And if it's not what you're liking, is like you really be sure um, you know you're going to be using it for for something that's very unique to you. Because typically there's a lot of things online that already have free tools that you can already use to uh, get ahead of life. And um, another one, another suggestion is to do something called change your approach. So, um, what is it? 
we got Tony Robbins here. He says, uh, frustration is a very positive sign. It means that your solution to your problem is within range, but what you're currently doing isn't working, and you need to change your approach in order to change to in order to achieve your goals. Um, I've, I've encountered this many times, where you're trying to come up with a solution, you're, try, you're trying so hard, you keep trying the same same solutions over and over again. It's like, all right, the solution you're proposing isn't working. You spend an hour on it, you spend two hours, it's, this isn't, maybe this isn't the way. And if you start to start feeling that frustration, like, how come this isn't working? It's like, take a breath, take it easy, rethink it over. Is this the right approach to what you want to accomplish? Or is this something else that you might have, might need to um, change your change change the way you're uh, approaching your goal. There's another cool one, which is trying to get into a state of flow. So your goal here is to try to balance your competency and the challenge. So you want to do things that are competent and and leave. So if you're doing things that are competent. Um, it can lead to like boredom. Like if you eventually you, you're you're confident in something, you keep going, keep going. Eventually, it's like oh, you start to get this like tiring feeling. It's like oh, it's not, you know, it's not, it's, it's just it's just not feeding your soul basically. But then you also don't want to do things that are too challenging because then it leads to stress and frustration and this this feeling like I can't do this. This isn't this isn't right. So we want to try to get into that balance of the two. And that's where you get this change, this state of flow, and you guys probably all experienced that at some point where, where you're working on a project in an hour or two, maybe three go by, and you just don't know where the time's gone. And it's because that's that perfect blend of a challenge met with something that you're competent in, something that's like just above, it's just above your competency, there's enough challenge just so you can kind of keep going on this um, you know, rocket ship up. So you have a perfect graph. There's a YouTube video on this whole discussion, right? You want to try to get enough challenge to so get into the state of flow, but you don't want too much, or else you start to get anxious and you start to think you can't do it. And then if you get too used to what you're doing, you start to get bored, you start to get tired, you start to just kind of zone out, not really feeling up for the task. And if you get in the state of flow, you get to achieve an ecstasy, which of course is a very good feeling. So there's some books I highly recommend. One of them is Eat That Frog, 21 Great Ways to Stop Procrastinating and Get More Done in Less Time. And one of the things is hit the saying, uh, eat that frog, which is it's an old saying, if you eat a, a live frog in the morning, it'll be the most <laughs> difficult task of the day, but you have that weird satisfaction that it was the worst task of the day and nothing worse can possibly happen. Now that now there's also the fact that maybe you're, you're not a morning person or <laughs> so there's different paths. So one sometimes like all right, I'm I'm up, I'm alive, I'm waking, I'm good, you know, I'm alive, I'm awake, feeling good. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and eat that frog. I'm gonna go take on the biggest task of the day. Alternatively, I'm always more so of this baby steps formula that uh, Dave Ramsey talks about, which is you've got an important task, it's small, it's achievable, like a 15 minute, I'm gonna do this quick update for somebody, and after 15 minutes, like, I, I just did my first task. And then you start you start to build that momentum, then you go for something harder and harder, and you try to go up in that order, and you build up that momentum. So. It depends on the task, it depends how you're feeling, it depends on a few things, but those are two big important ones. Uh, another big one is something called the Par Parleto Pareto's Principle. It's also known as the 80-20 rule. Um, you hear the famous line, 80% of your business comes from 20% of your clients. Another one is 80% of your results come from 20% of your actions. And you, you start to see that in your life, um, um, the certain tasks you're doing. And so the big question is, what is 20% that you do that gets you 80% of the results? And that's your homework for tonight. Try to think of something that, that's, that you do, that if you kept focusing on it, you know, what are, what are the results that you could really achieve from it? Um, 
And so there's also a few other things. There's like three steps to mastery. One is 30 to 60 minutes in a book or magazine. Another one is trying to go to networking events, workshops and courses like WordCamp. And another one is audio programs. Uh, you know, think about how much you could have learned on your commute here to WordCamp. Uh, also, to, there's all sorts of audio books that I'd, I would highly recommend. Um, there's some podcasts as well that, that are pretty helpful. And another one that's not on here is that they've, they've asked like Jimi Hendrix at one point. I was like, oh, well, how, how often do you play the guitar and stuff? And he's like, well, I, I practice eight hours a day. He's like, you're, you're Jimi Hendrix. You're like the best. You're, you're the best ever. It's like, why do you need to play eight hours a day? He's like, well, that's why I'm the best that there is, because I play eight hours a day. And so they started to realize that if you can get up to, I believe, a thousand hours at something, it's either a thousand or ten thousand hours, you've become a master at your craft. And so you start to think about all the hours that you spend a year. I think one year is about 2,000 working hours. You do that for five years, you'll be a master of whatever you're doing. So it's very important to build up good habits and have work. And then in five years, you could be a master of what you're doing. Another one is uh, to guard and nurture your energy levels. Um, are you a morning person or a night owl? Um, one big thing that I noticed a lot of times people who are morning people, then they're going to the emails and checking emails and spending all this time on the emails. It's like, is that the best use of your energy? It's like you're a morning person, you're going to spend all that, that you know, energy ready to go on your emails. Uh, sometimes maybe those things are better off like in the middle <coughs> time or later on. I know that's a little difficult because clients might be expecting your emails. But it's, some, it's things like that to just keep in mind of. It's like, when, when are your energy levels at, at your best, right? So, um, just something to consider. Uh, another book I highly recommend is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And so, the seven habits are, one is to be proactive, adopt the perspective of responsibility for your actions, reactions, and results. Um, I'm just going to fly through these, these habits. Number two is to begin with the end in mind. Make sure your efforts start with the uh, establishment of your personal principles. Um, like, you know, what are you trying to achieve? What are your goals in life? Is this, is this the path that you're going to go down? Um, and what is it going to look like in, in the end? Um, you know, I'm trying to think, like, you, you really want, you, just, you really want to think about your goal what you want to do for your career-wise, what's it going to look like in the end when you spend all these hours on these websites and doing these different tasks. Number three is to put things first. Uh, we'll be talking about this in a little bit, but spend your time on things that are important, not the things that are urgent. And this is called the Eisenhower Matrix after the president. Um, we'll be reviewing that in a second. Oh, always think about win-win. It, the approach of every interaction with the perspective of trying to fix the system, not the person, in order to find the solution that is the best for all involved. So, um, you see that a lot. Um, and one kind of thing is like, if you, if you get something from me that I lost, or vice versa, it's like, no, that's, that's not how this all works. Um, you, try to, you try to bring an approach, it's like, I'm going to build your website, you're going to pay me, and I'm gonna, we're going to... Have, have a good relationship, and you're going to get something that you want, I'm going to get something that I want, and then it all works out for everybody. And so it's always good to have that positive mindset. Number five is to seek first to be understand, under, seek first to understand and to be understood. Meet people's need to be under, understood, establish trust, and communicate your emotions, and then communicate your logic last. Right, you want to be approachable, you want to be liked, you get, kind of think of like that, that, I don't want to say politician, because you know, they kind of have that sleaziness to them. But you want to kind of be like someone that you can trust and understand. A good realtor will do that. Um, there's many, many people that you can look up to for that type of understanding. Um, everybody kind of seems to connect on the emotional basis. I mean, that is why we, how we typically vote for politicians in general is based on how do we trust them, how do we feel about them. I've known 
many, many people who are like Republicans who vote for Democrats and vice versa just because of their, their affinity towards them. Number six is to synergize, combine your, the first five habits for an exponential higher level of effective and corroborative daily interaction. So that's all about building up good habits. Um, as soon as you get those habits in place, uh, you're not going to even think about them. It takes 21 days to build up a habit. So if you can you know, try to build up that habit, things are going to just become really easy. You'll start to enter that state of flow kind of type of effect. So it's very important. And number seven is to sharpen the saw, which is all about um, maintaining your body, you know, exercising, eating right, feeling good. You always want to try to build up that energy in you. And so the Eisen, so to back to number three was about the Eisenhower matrix. So you have four different boxes. You have your first box, which is important and urgent. Your important and not urgent. Not urgent and important. And then not important and not urgent. And to break that all down, you have the first one, which is important and urgent. And this one's all about like, the house is on fire, the IRS is sending me a letter, my passport is about to expire, you, like everything's just chaotic, you're freaking out, you don't, you don't know what to do, you're starting to get nervous, you start to wonder like, oh, do I have the money for this, do I have this, that, it's like, it's chaotic, you don't want to be here, but it's important, you need to, you know, call 911, you need to, you need to figure out your letter to the IRS, you need, you need to do these things, but you need to not be in this box all the time, well, so you're going to start feeling chaotic. Life, you're going to feel very, very tired. So the best thing to do is try to set up habits to like, oh, my passport's going to expire next year. Try to get ahead of the curve on all these things. You know, paying your taxes on time, having having some sort of system in place uh, for all of these things. Number two is important and not urgent. This is the actually the most important box because it's all about learning a new skill, reading a book attending work camp, trying to find time for things that are going to really improve your life. Um, and it's typically the things that you know in the back of mind what you need to do. It's just the fact that you, that you haven't made the time for it all. Um, so, so do your best. That's another big homework piece for you guys. Let's try to figure out what's uh, your number two box, the important, not urgent, and how to make time for it. Number three is your not important, but urgent. These are typically phone calls and emails and notifications and that annoying co-worker who always tells you how bad they have it. You, you can always try to avoid these things. Obviously, you need to check your phone and, and whatnot, but typically at, at work, I keep my phone on silent. Um, if, 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 I'll, I'll check my phone periodically, but you know I don't need that constant interruption of notifications and text messages and people kind of stopping me from what I'm doing because then I lose that state of flow and it just it kind of really upsets the system. And number four is your not important and not urgent. It is it's kind of funny. It is an important box because you do need time to like relax, how to be ambitious and go getter all the time. But things like social media, movies, video games, Netflix and chill. It's like you, you don't need this in in your life, at least to the extent that we have it. Uh, I think the average person spends um, three to five hours on social media a day. It's like, we, what if you had found time to do those other things in life? So these are the areas like, you know, fair warning, be careful, but it is important to hang out with friends and uh, do things as well. This is actually a box I need to focus on a little bit more in my life. In all ironic, all in all irony. And so, for good time management, you really, really, really want to be in this box. The important, not urgent. If you can master that, life's going to be really good. And so some WordPress specific tools and advice that I can give you guys is to first create some documentation in terms of initial setup, your style guide, and launching a website. Uh, at my old company, we really didn't do much for style guides. They were sending me a logo. If the sales reps would always just, they're just trying to push a sale. And so the client wouldn't give me a lot of content, but I, I took up a new job recently, and so we have a style guide. Highly effective. Try to make, even if it's something small, 
I would always do something small, like, all right, these are the colors that we're going to use, these are the different fonts, just like, like any, any type of style guide is important. And then the other two guides are more general for like your initial setup. That's going to be different for everybody. I use Liquid Web, uh, formerly known as Rackspace, at my old company. Now we're using our own internal servers at Amazon. Um, so that's going to be different for everybody, but there's definitely a system in place that you guys use. Uh, definitely important to write it down. It's great to have for when you guys hire somebody new or when you so happen to forget a step. Uh, it's always very important. And it doesn't have to be, you should always do the two things, which is to have the documentation and then to add it into a checklist. So that way when you go down the, down the steps, you can easily check it off. You don't need to read the six pages of your documentation. You just have to read this one page of your notes. And the same goes for launching a website as well. Uh, I have, huh, all right, there we go. We have my Evernote. So this is my documentation for how to launch a website. You go review all the pages for links and make sure the content's good. Is it responsive? Is there a favicon? Is there a 404 error page? A copyright date? Does it have Google Analytics? And that's all under general, and then everything's broken down. Right? This is the delete your unused content, how to, your contact form set up, the different plugins that I'll use. It makes everything very easy for me to follow up, you know, did these things happen? And I have a checklist in the future for when the client says, oh, did, did this get done? So yes, you know, these are the things that got done. Or I can double check, uh, like an intern. It's like, oh, did you check these off? I didn't notice you didn't check these certain things off and something happened. It's really good so you guys can easily follow up with what's going on. And if you had any questions, um, like how to install certain plugins or how to set up certain things, uh, you can go back to the documentation. But you're supposed to be building up habits, so when you look at this, it should be very easy to know what to do. You just check it off and move on to the next thing. All right, selecting plugins. And there was a good speech today about whether to do in-house development or whether you should download a plugin. Um, in my scenario, we were trying to build out sites really, really fast. I typically would just have one day to build out a website. So I would just have to, I would just have to go nuts. I'm like, all right, well, no time to build plugins. So I was like, how do I, what do I do? Which plugins do I use? And so it's always use the most popular, try to use the most popular plugin, unless you have a really good reason not to. And, um, and it's really helpful because there's typically a community that can help you with these types of things. So I always look for the most downloads. And then it's most typically the most downloads. And then sometimes I'll look at the ratings uh, to see if there's good support and stuff. You always want to make sure the plugins are have some sort of, um, you know, some frequency in terms of like release dates and updates and things like that. Um, sometimes you'll see things that haven't been reviewed and you know, haven't been updated in a year. It's like, all right, that's it's not looking so good. Um, so you can still use it, but you, you really, really be aware that like this plugin might not be supported anymore and try to have a fallback plan should that happen. Um, as I always say, why build something from scratch? We can modify what somebody already has made. Uh, that's been the big thing when I was at Green Free Banana and trying to um, achieve all the goals that we had. And so some of the plugins that I recommend was uh, Duplicate Page. Essentially, you can duplicate all sorts of pages, posts, custom posts. Uh, it was really cool because you can start to build out pages really, really fast. Um, try to get some dem demo content in. Uh, if you already have a page set up of a certain style that you already liked, you just keep it in the duplicate button, and all of a sudden you got a bunch of pages that you can edit. So that was one really good plugin. Another one is this plugin called Insert Pages. This is pretty cool because you can build out, like, typically I build up a footer in Avada, and I have a nice, like, visual, use a visual editor, has all sorts of, uh, um, you know, parallax picture, contact form, and everything's nice and neat, but then we want to put it on every page. We want the foot, we want this, like, very stylized footer on every page. It's like, oh, how do we do this? And so there's this cool plugin 
called insert pages, and you can just insert the short code. So I'll have a page called footer. I'll insert that footer with the short code on, on in the WP footer um, template. And all of a sudden, I'll have this really pretty footer on all the pages. And it's like, we're done. It's like, that's cool. All right. And then we move on to the next task. Uh, another one was this better search replace. Essentially, it, all it does is it replace, replaces your text and code throughout your database. Um, some people, it's, it's difficult sometimes to get into the cPanel and log in, and you're to write this query, this, that. I skipped all that steps. This plugin does it all. So you can replace your code, your phone numbers, email addresses, you can do it all globally. Uh, the only big thing is you need to save your database or at least understand what you're going to be changing. You don't, you, you know, if you change your, your uh, what do you call it, when you change your URL address, like be very, very careful, you might end up breaking your site. So before you do this, at least understand how to log back in to your database should you try to update your URLs using this type of plugin. And if that happens, you guys can always contact me. I'll, I'll help you guys out. <laughs> and another one is Pageless. This was a cool plugin. We use this a lot for SEO purposes to build out a sitemap. You literally, all you do is insert the show code Pageless, and it generates a sitemap, and you're done. That's it. That's all you need to do. And um, yeah, just another quick way to get things done in the least amount of time. And so selecting a theme, I've always just stuck with Avada. We kept using different themes, kept purchasing different themes. And then, as you would know, you go to the theme options, and things are in different places for different themes. And you're wondering where, where, am, I, where am I going, where, where are all these things. You spend all this time researching. And eventually, I said, I've had enough. I'm sticking to the Avada theme. I'm just going to, I'm going to know where everything is, I'm going to know this, this one theme front and back, and it's been extremely successful um, to the point where I built out a site in like four hours, nice five, five page site, contact form, all sorts of different things. So uh, if you get really good at one theme, know it really well, develop some CSS that you can implement that you typically use, uh, you can just really try to turn out sites, like good looking sites in a short amount of time. And so one of the things is, that I have all sorts of other files, but like a quick example would be, I want to center things, I want to hide things, easily write something like this, like dot center, text align center into your code. Uh, as soon as you have a code block, you want to center everything, you just insert that class name center, and, and all of a sudden everything goes well. You can do that with like background colors as well, something like BG, red, and all of a sudden your colors all, uh, your background colors are all red. Anything to just try to make the process much faster, much cleaner. Um, a big thing I always recommend is, is to read up the bootstrap documentation because you can, you can start taking all, all sorts of different lessons of how they structure their CSS and, um, and how, how they achieve things. So they'll do something like red or, or primary color, this, that, and you just start inserting those classes and all of a sudden you, you're, you'll start to be coding a lot faster, a lot cleaner. And so I have a big list of all the things I use over and over again, all sorts of Avada stuff. So I have a typography thing, so I'll have something for like, um, like it'd be like H1 red, H1 red, H2 red, all these different things, just trying to get um, all my coloring right. I have all sorts of things for like the contact forms, and um, I don't know, it just makes that life really easier. The current year for your copyright dates, uh, you start to realize you're going to repeat this, the work that you do. People are going to like the other things that you've done. So if you try to save up all the things that you've done and make it, try to generate yourself a process, uh, you're going to be coding a lot faster and a lot cleaner. And last but not least, is to learn your one-on-ones. So I always recommend everybody should learn like the one-on-ones about writing, design, development, Photoshop, business, sales, SEO, just the basics. Um, 
So like I, I had to learn Photoshop at my old job. Uh, you just all you all you really need to do is to be able to like, crop images, how to how to optimize your images, how to add a color overlay. I'll get a logo that's like black and transparent, and you're like, oh, this is good. But then you realize the site that you want is is also black, and it's like, okay, black on black. That doesn't work out at all. So to be able to go into Photoshop and add a overlay to make it white, something like that is very critical. So that way you're not always hanging on to your designers or or um, the other people at work. And you start to realize like that Pareto's law, which is that 80/20 rule. Like you only need to know like the 20% of Photoshop. You don't need to know everything about it, but you'll achieve 80% of the results for knowing that. And so it really helps you. Um, become a more self-independent, self-efficient type of uh, developer. And that's it. So if you guys have any questions, you know, let me know. Any questions? Yeah, I can. Um, I can get that up there. Just cool. give me a day, and I'll. I'll get okay, because I want to compare your checklist against my instructor. Okay, sure. Yeah, we can do that. And and if you guys need anything, you guys can always email me. Everything's on my website. So phone. So phone call, um, email, anything, text. You guys can all find it out on my website, and I'll easily help you guys out. Like I said, I, I know what it's like to, to kind of. I'm not, su not suggesting that you guys are oh, you know, freelancers or on your own, but like I know what it's like to not, not know where to go, what to do, this, that. So, you know, always contact me. I always try to at least point you guys in the right direction. So, I just want to help. So, it's all good. Quick yep. About, um, related to efficiencies. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things you suggested, you know, great standard, um, mm -hmm. but. Yes. Do you have any tips or things that you do to make sure that you're not wasting hours on something you thought was going to take this long, but it took that long, and you can't really bill yeah. for it, and just kind of time management in, in, in relation to billing and quoting? It's, and it's tough. The, the, the best thing is to try to keep a record of all the things that, you, that, that you've done in terms of like how, how long certain things will take, so that way you can have this history of like how long certain things will take. Like let's say adding a contact form to your a website. Does it take 30 minutes? Does it take an hour? Try to try to find that range of what it might take, and then I always add an additional 50% um, in terms of time wise. Like all right, we're gonna do this, or, or uh, try to add, try to do like a range. So if I think it's gonna take an hour to do something. I'll say, oh, this is going to take an hour to two hours, just so, just so I can have that wiggle room. Yeah. Um, if somebody else has a better better suggestion, I'm open to it. But that's typically what I've been doing. And at my new job, I don't have to do those things anymore. So I didn't have enough time to test if that was the best the best methodology. But that's that's what I remember. Just curious, because I, you know, I'm Virginia. Over time, okay, well, I've got all the footage built. That's easy, that's fine. All of a sudden, I just spent 15 hours trying to get the guy to give me the right logo. And he's yeah. Like, are you charging? Are you charging power? Are you charging the best? Well, it depends because certain customers they block when you give them a bulk fee, and if yeah. you say, "Well, I'll do it hourly," then they'll be like, "Oh, I'm one page to them." So it's kind of the trying to walk the mouse. Yeah. Typically, we do it by the bulk, so typically I didn't have to worry about it, but at the same time. We'll have to do some ad hoc type of stuff as well. We use a tool called Harvest, um, and we have probably 15 people that are billing at any given time. And so, Harvest is an invoicing and timing tool, and then we integrate with Basecamp or uh, Zendesk or Trello. And what it does is it puts a little timer, um, and it, you select the client, you select the task, and you turn the timer off on and off and if you start another task, it'll automatically switch. And so what it does is over the course of the day, um, you can see what you're doing over the course of a project. You can get a breakdown of exactly where the time went. 
And so our clients love it because it's like, you know, you know lawyers will bill every 15 minutes, you know, yeah. 30 minutes, yeah. 8 minutes, but they get our invoices and it's like, you know, Lily runs our support desk, you know, be a bunch of, you know, 10-minute tasks, 7-minute tasks, 4-minute tasks, and, um, you know, then we can bill them accurately at the end of the month. So, and you can generate your invoices by that. And you can probably create... You know, if you're doing a lot of like smallish websites, you know, most websites are the same overall, you know, right? Same process, like that yeah. checklist, um, Brad had. So you can set up a template in Harvest of what a website project has for tasks, and then um, just kind of run through that so that you can look back in time and say, okay, a footer takes an hour, a contact form takes two hours, a page on average takes three hours, and you can quote based on actual data. Last oh, sure. Uh, just as an input, I always found it very helpful to make sure my clients understand that websites are works in progress. Yeah. They aren't done, finished, completed things like a brochure or a catalog. Yeah, time, time. Uh, and just say that, you know, what they see now, they are not limited to, and their website will look different a year from now than what it does now. Yeah. And also, too, if I have a client that wants, you know, to write a blog, just have them write the blog in an email and send it to me, and I'll get it posted up in in WordPress. Don't try to make your client learn how to create posts in WordPress, though, unless they like WordPress, because they'll just get frustrated and they won't tend to write them. If they have a blog that they've written, just have them send it to you in an email. Yeah. I'll get it up and posted in 30 seconds. That would take them 10 minutes or yeah. 20 minutes to do. It's, it's That's funny. a huge time saver. It's funny because sometimes. We would go back and forth about this, and I still don't know what the best solution was, which was sometimes, um, like, I'm overloaded, I'm the one guy, somebody really wants to thin up, and I'll send them a documentation, like, oh, like, here you go, this is how you do, this is how you do this, and yeah. if they couldn't do it, well, we'll, we'll charge them, it's like, that's not, Yeah, well, not well, unless they're familiar with how to create posts in, Word, in WordPress, yeah. just have them send you the blog and an email, you'll get it posted, it's... More work for you, but it's well worth the time. Yeah, and it exactly. solidifies the relationship. Like, All right. Yeah, yeah. We'll boom, it's done. It's up. Yep. You know, you you know how to set featured images and blah in posts yep. and things like that. Yeah, and to be and to be fair, to to, to agree banana, it's not like we just charge we just charge everything. Yeah, I, we, I we throw in like a two, lot of things. We do like two maintenances. Um, we would have two maintenance tasks when a part of your hosting. So if you yeah. had to do a post or something like that, then we would have to do that. Thank you. All right, you're very welcome. Thanks. Thanks, guys.